Hi, this is Ivani and X, and welcome to the Candid Frame YouTube channel. Uh, before we start, I want to remind you that I've written a short ebook. It's called The Candid Frame on Street Photography. It's a small compilation of tips that I find essential for my own street photography. And it really tells you uh, a little bit about my approach working on the street and creating my images. You'll see a lot of my pictures on the, uh, on the Flickr group, uh, if you haven't seen them already. And a lot of people ask me how I create certain images. Well, this book really can tell you a whole lot about my approach. I know that every photographer shoots a little differently on the street, but this is my approach. This is what works for me. And some, if not all, of what you read in that book will might work for you. So if you want to check it out, all you need to do is visit the site at thecandidframe.com. Go to the link here on the right-hand side and uh, just sign up for our mailing list and we'll send you out a, a free copy. And uh, we'll periodically be updating you not only on episodes of The Candid Frame, but some exciting news that's going to be starting in, uh, in April. So uh, check it out. Now, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to choose images just that I, I really liked uh, this week. There's no real grand um, idea or theme that I wanted to uh, talk about this week. I just chose pictures that kind of stopped me in my tracks, and I just wanted to share with them with you and explain why I like them. Now, here's this image by Mike Beecham. Uh, this shot was made with the Fuji Finepix X100. The exposure was 1 60th of a second at F2 at 1 800, uh, ISO 800. And uh, this looks like it was shot probably in, uh, in London, in the, uh, on, the, on the underground. And I just love the story that this shot elicits. Immediately, it just gives rise to a, a question in terms of, what's happening with this couple and this woman that's uh, looking at them on the left side of the frame. Um, obviously, it's, you know, crunch time. It looks like these people are coming or going to work. Uh, and so they're just squeezing into, into the, uh, the subway car. And uh, I don't know if this man and woman know each other. I get the sense that they do. And it just kind of gives rise to a question as if there's some tension that's happening between these two. And this woman who's looking askance at both of them. I don't know if any of that's true, but the relationships, the way that they're uh, positioned with each other within the frame, makes me want to create a story about what's happening here. Um, this woman on the left probably doesn't know these people. She's just another passenger on the train. But you can't help but feel that there's something going on between the three of them. And uh, I think that's kind of fun. Even though uh, nothing is really spelled out for us, uh, the, the fact that we as people are always trying to impose stories or trying to figure things out uh, is always an interesting part of, of, of really good photographs. And I think that Michael did a great job here. And, and I commend him for doing as good a job as he did in nailing the focus on the, on the figures on the right. Uh, as you can see, the, the light levels were not that, uh, not that friendly, especially in a subway car. Um, you got that fluorescent light that's happening inside of the car and whatever other lights are happening on the outside. And then it can make focus a challenge, especially with the, with the mirrorless cameras where the focusing is really based on, uh, the actual sensor rather than an AF, uh, mechanism. And, uh, you know, she, her eyes are tack sharp in the shot. And that's, that really is lovely, uh, lovely, lovely, lovely to see. It's a, it's a great shot. I've, I mentioned it to Mike when I first saw him post the image, uh, I think on Facebook, and I'm glad that he included it here uh, for, for the group to see. Here's a uh, shot by Johnny Shakedown. He shot this with a Canon 5D Mark II uh, at 1 6400th of a second at f3.5 at ISO 640. Now, what I like about this image is that this woman seems to be completely exhausted. I mean, she's, she's toasted as she leans herself against this uh, bus kiosk. Um, it's just the exhaustion, I feel it when I take a look at the shot. I mean, that's, that's wonderful. It's wonderful to convey in a photograph. It's sometimes kind of hard to do it, especially in a street photograph, but you... But uh, I think Johnny here does just a great job. Uh, the way she's clutching that near empty McDonald's uh, uh, paper bag, the way her body is, is being supported by the, the glass of the kiosk, uh, just 
just works wonders here. And he did a great job with the exposure because you can see that her face and the upper part of her shoulders are relegated to shadow and this and everything else is in direct sunlight. And this is really, really tricky. Uh, I don't know to what extent he may have had to massage the exposure in order to pull out that uh, that detail in the face. Uh, but as far as the exposure itself, um, they really nailed it because we get really good detail on her face, on her body, on her legs. We get some blown out areas behind her, but I think that really adds to this image, this uh, uh, this sort of very high key image except for, for her face. Uh, I don't mind the fact that we don't have any highlight detail in the background or even on the sidewalk itself. I think it really adds to the feeling of the of the image, a feeling of just being sort of overwhelmed. Uh, in this case, it's light that's sort of overwhelming the scene, but I think it complements the overall feeling of the shot. We do have this large red thing on the right, and normally when I see like a large red element on the edges of the frame that doesn't complement the subject, it kind of bothers me. Uh, I don't know if it bothers me in this particular shot. I, I don't think it does. I'm not sure exactly what that is, whether it's some sort of ticket machine or whatever. Um, it, it works for me. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it does pull me towards the right, but I can't, I keep getting drawn back to her uh, again, because I think she is, it's so much brighter around her. So there's this strong contrast that's created between her body and the outside. Uh, she's obviously the sharpest element of the frame. You have the pattern of her, of her coat. You also have the lines of her legs that sort of lead us up to, to her, um, Everything here is is working. I think if you I think if you cropped out that thing on the right, uh, the image wouldn't be as interesting compositionally. Uh, I think it, it works really really well. Uh, might this work just as well as a black and white? I, I I don't know. Maybe this image works as a black and white. Well, let's let's do that. So what do you think? Does it work better as a black and white? Is it black as a color? Um, you know, I leave it, I leave it for you to decide. But nevertheless, I think it's a very very cool image and, and kudos to Johnny for capturing it. And then lastly, we have this shot by George uh, Pensikis. He shot this with a 5D at an exposure of 1 500th of a second at F8 at ISO 640. And when I took a look at this shot, I mean, I made an audible noise. Uh, I thought it was just a great, great moment uh, that George here managed to capture. The contrast of this elderly man hunched over moving forward very, very slowly, and then you have this figure coming up behind him carrying what looks like a tube or a carpet or something and making a mad dash to the left of the frame. Uh, just wonderful elements to contrast against each other. And I know how difficult it can be to see something like this happening in front of your eyes and being quick enough to raise the camera to your eye to make uh, a picture here. Uh, I think it works really, really nicely. Um, just just capturing this moment, uh, George d deserves full props because I think so many people would actually see this and by the time they realized it had the potential for a photograph, they would have missed it completely. And uh, uh, it, 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 it nails it. Nails it really, really well. Uh, it's a, a photo you, you should be very, very pleased with. So I just wanted to make a quick video this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we'll be back for more next week. And if you want to contribute images to the Flickr pool, all you need to do is go to the Candid Frame Flickr pool on Flickr and just ask to be added, and I'll be glad to do so. And then you can submit your images and check the work of so many other photographers from all over the world who are uh, submitting some amazing, amazing photographs. And if you've not heard of the Candid Frame, and this is the first time you uh, uh, have ever heard, heard of us, you'll want to go to thecandidframe.com and listen to the podcast, which features conversation with some of the world's best photographers. And uh, it's, it's a great show, if uh, you don't mind me saying. And you'll, I'm sure, draw a lot of inspiration from some of the amazing talent we have an opportunity to speak with each week. So thanks again for joining me, and I will see you next time.